Richard Rohr, and he is a Franciscan friar who uh, actually addresses uh, the idea of cosmic child abuse quite a bit and uh, goes so far as to say in certain writings that if you believe that you're a sinner, that you need to be reconciled to God, that, that you you know, that you're unholy until you're justified by God, that that's actually a sign of like a mental health issue that you might even have. It's a toxic mm -hmm. kind of uh, belief, according to him. And so he wrote this in a blog post. He said, why would God need a blood sacrifice before God could love what God had created? Is God that needy, unloving, rule-bound, and unforgiving? Once you say it, you see it creates a nonsensical theological notion that is very hard to defend. What would God ask of me if God demands violent blood sacrifice from God's only son? A violent theory of redemption legitimated punitive and violent problem-solving all the way down, from papacy to parenting. If God uses and needs violence to attain God's purposes, maybe Jesus did not really mean what he said on the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew 5, blessed are the gentle, the merciful, and the peacemakers. So there's a lot there. What do you think? From the very first sentence, he sets up a straw man, which he then easily demolishes. He says, why would God need a blood sacrifice before God could love what he has created? And the doctrine of the atonement is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is the love of God that motivates the atoning sacrifice of Christ. So the sacrifice of Christ is not needed to motivate the love of God, quite the opposite. The love of God motivates God to take on human flesh and to give his life in a supreme act of self-sacrifice in order to satisfy the demands of God's justice. So it's God's justice that demands punishment for sin, rightly deserved. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. It's a capital offense. And God would not be perfectly just if he did not exact the demands of justice. But because he is loving, he does not exact the demands of justice from our hand, but rather he exacts it from his own. He pays the price himself in the second person of the Trinity, Christ, uh, on the cross. And it's interesting to me, too, this isn't a particular comment toward Richard Rohr per se, but often those who are saying they don't want God to get justice that way, that they don't want mm. him to institute justice, are the very ones crying out for justice in other areas of life. And so I think sometimes it can be a redefinition of words, like maybe what they mean by justice isn't what God's justice is. And uh, it seems to be motivated also out of a misunderstanding of what God's love is. It's like defining words like love and justice based on our own sort of uh, inclinations and impressions and consciences rather than defining those words biblically according to God's nature. Well, I think you're right that there really is a deep contradiction here in their demand for justice and their championing the rights of the oppressed mm. and the abused, and yet saying that God doesn't need to be just, yeah. that, that he uh, doesn't care about the victims of these sins or these crimes. Uh, the wrath of God is perfectly appropriate. He ought to be incensed with the evil that mankind has perpetrated upon others. And uh, for a perfectly just God to exact the demands of justice is, is an expression of his perfect holiness. Yeah. God help us if God is not just. Right, yes. And I've, I've often said too, I'm actually thankful for God's wrath towards sin. It's because he has wrath mm. towards sin that he can keep his promise to wipe away every tear from our eye and essentially quarantine those who love him and trust him away from evil and sin forever. And so we should be very grateful that he's wrathful toward sin. The Christian philosopher Steve Davis has said, our only hope is the wrath of God. Wow. And what he meant by that was that it is an expression that God is perfectly just mm. and therefore can be depended upon to do the right thing 
and not be a capricious and arbitrary God like the God of Islam, for example, who is not bound by any sort of uh, internal justice. Mm -hmm.